use go to link in um, uh, daily work and as you know uh, go lang is um, if you uh, just do um, okay uh, what is go tooling um, to sum up go tooling is uh, a setup on uh, uh, command line tool usually we actually help you to increase your daily activities uh, productivities and um, even though Golang is a very um, new language, it has a, a huge collection of um, um, go, uh, go to. And actually, you can build your own using a like, uh, basic understanding of how you uh, analyze and um, understanding about the, um, the um, uh, code structure. So um, I just like um, um, uh, go to the Golang website. And um, I can see like, uh, um, there's a, a several. Uh, tools provided by the um, Go community. Uh, it's actually in the golangs.org.x tools. And, um, Present is down there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, can you see it? Yeah. Present right there. Uh, and actually, the one the two uh, as you in use just now yes, is a present. So, yes, so uh, it's very like, amazing that Go to actually support every um it's like simple functions and uh, one of the cool things like you if you notice like in the some of the slides you actually can um, um, embed the go code inside the go present on a plate in the go play play dot go length dot org so um, um in uh in terms of go to link uh, there's basically there are three uh, categories one is a static analysis. It means that you analyze your um, functions, your um, your five folder structure. You uh, grab the names, and you have like, all collections of um, you have all the statistics of um, variables, uh, names, um, uh, pointers, and uh, you can build um, profiling based on that. Uh, dynamic analysis. It means that when you run the, your program, especially like for example you run a, a Go web server, and you want to see how is it, um, uh, how the Go routines behave, and you can trace and see it like um, um, different process. Um, escapes analysis, you want to see your flow, the flow of your program. For example, you have a main functions, and um, you can see um, we have a different. On uh, smaller functions, you want to see how um, memories, garbage collectors actually have to allocate the memory on the heap or in the stack. So um, it's very, very useful. So I, I just like um, um, go to one of the static analysis too. Um, go Guru. So this one is um, you can uh, sorry. Okay, um, GoGuru is some, somehow you didn't, I mean, uh, you didn't aware of that happens, but actually, if you use some um, popular um, ID, for example, like VS Code, and you didn't try to uh, find the usage of some functions, for example, I, will, I have a, uh, I opened VS Code, and I have a function named locked. I want to see the, uh, which actually uh, functions call or invoke this function. So actually, I try to do if I want to find all the reference. But actually, this one is not um, GoGuru. So the way um, you, you can see how GoGuru is working is like by using uh, GoVim. So um, let's uh, do an uh, example here. You can see it's a bit slow because uh, VS Code actually using their own uh, way to, to, uh, to find the colors and the colleagues. OK. Um, so. For example, I go to Vim, and here is the same folder. So I try to uh, look at the same file. Yes. OK, so I have a new context function here. And I want to know like, um, uh, what is the uh, um, um, 
the colors, I mean, which, I mean, which um, line of code actually invokes these functions. So, okay, I, I try to, uh, to run uh, the inbuilt to uh, by Vimgo. So, Okay, so actually uh, we can see that uh, there's a static function call calling from um, uh, two files. One is in the uh, benchmark test. Another one is in, um, actually you can jump to the functions to see like, actually where is it um, uh, um, uh, calling these functions. So um, is, is that like everywhere in, your, in the Go tree or was it, I mean, what, can you just grab? Uh, you can grab, but actually, you the grab. You actually we show you like uh, the usage in the functions, comments, on everything. You usually you don't you you want to know actually exactly where the functions call it, and it's it's a function call. It's not like um, you, if you grab, you just grab a string. You can grab again right. for fun. If you want yes, I mean you can use uh, 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 for example I. So this one does the whole tree or something. Yeah. yeah so I mean, it's linked actually to the different package. Uh -huh. um, okay. Um, if you want to find out find out more about Vimcos, then yeah, you can. Yeah, I will, I will give you the link later. For so basically, um, GoGuru help you to find to analyze your source code and find find out about like. Um, yeah, one of the my my favorite too is, um, yeah, you can see the impl imp implementations. So, for example, I have a the same file here. I can type go game implementation. I'm oh, sorry. Is this part of Go 1.9, or is it just a separate thing? No, it's, 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 it's a, you can run it on Go 1.8. 1, 1. Okay. It actually is built like a um, very long time ago. If you're interested in the uh, 1.9, I think it just released like, a few days ago, and um, maybe you, uh, it's a topic another talk. Uh, all right, so like, I mean, we can see like all the interface. Um, uh, which possibly this method or this functions implement? So like, if we have all, oh, actually this uh, um, error missing. Uh, possibly, it actually can be um, an error in the uh, different. For example, I have a two file here: encode and uh, decode. Code. So it's just like try to 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 help me a better understanding about how these functions uh, correlate each other. Okay, back to presentations. Um, okay. So the next tool I want to um, introduce is um, Go Generate. So if you want to do like, I mean, have you ever tried to do like some um, template generating in your uh, uh, daily work? For example, you have um, a struct, and you uh, would like um, to to add more comments with, or like you want to add marshal, marshal or unmarshal functions to uh, implement uh, encoding JSON's uh, method. So what we go to it, we help you to do it automatically. Okay, let's have an example. Okay, I have a, um, 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 I have a constant, actually it's, it's named like different kind of food in Singapore. And um, I want to use Stringer tools to um, to add a string functions 
to this uh, type. So I mean, usually you just do like, um, a switch case. Like if the foot is equal to Chakwe tail, is which, which means zero, then you uh, just print, uh, print out. So um, the cool, okay, um, uh, let me remove the output file. So here's a, so what you do is like you, you run uh, go generate. Then actually it find it all, all the go generate comment out in your code and try to um, run the next argument, which is you can put like um, um, uh, protobuf generator or use like um, Python generators to convert from y YAML to JSON, for example. So um, after I run go generate, let's see the uh, uh, output file. Okay, so what you see actually, um, it's actually a uh, generic code, which is not uh, encouraged to edit. Because actually every time you uh, modify your constant, um, this function we do the optimization. For example, you look at here, or oh, it's actually look a bit um, uh, unfriend, it's not, uh, heal, not, not really readable, but in terms of uh, code efficiency, it's, it's way it's really present way the, um, the, auto, the most automated way and the best way to, to produce the string functions. And actually it can help you, like, you don't need to worry about, or oh, I need to add the switch case every time you are uh, running. And this we very helpful if you have a lot of struct and you are going to generate, like, for example, you have a, um, where you have a load table and you want to implement a struct to Defined for storage layers, so uh, is is what I'm uh, uh, my um, in uh, in my work actually my team uh, uh, have to create a script file and uh, in the script file actually it try to trigger the go generate, which actually produce all the uh, template file. Oh, one of the things like you can actually can do. Uh, uh, for example, you are uh, uh, in in Vimgo. Actually, you, you can use uh, using the Go Jared too. Um, but it's actually you. Uh, sorry, um, you can use Go implement to actually try to generate the code. For example, you um, you want to use is this is, is this code you want to add? Um, okay, for example. You want to add uh, a new um, new functions to implement IO reader. So I mean, how do you like um, do that? Do IO reader actually is a package in uh, in GoLang. So uh, you can use a Go implement. Um, um, What's, what's your question? Sorry. Uh, I was wondering if you use Vengo or VS Code normally when you. I use uh, VS Code normally. Mm. But just for illustrate some example, actually, a lot of Go tooling already uh, built in uh, uh, Vimco. So it's very confident if you want to, uh, to uh, understand more about Go tooling. So, for example, I want to implement IO Reader. Okay, uh, to, um, to know more about GoVim, you can go to this uh, report. And, um, I mean, search for the, oh. Oh yes, you can start to run uh, help uh, Vim go in, inside Vim. 
to understand more about um, this library. So, um, oh, the next two is I want to talk about go test. So go test is like the basic, the basic uh, unit unit test you want to do in the pro your programming. And um, for go test, um, it's very interesting if you want to see like package coverage. For example, you want to make sure that all your code is uh, is the test unit coverage must be like more than eighty percent. And you want to see like I mean how uh, how do you increase your test coverage daily? Okay, and, uh, for them, let's do it. Um, for them, I have a um, uh, Lux um, package, and I I want to see um, if I want to just to this uh, run go test and see the coverage, but I don't. I can I can see that it's actually covered twenty four percent, but I don't know which function I want to to uh, increase. So um, here is how we uh, we want to to break down. Which actually we we run a cover profile and uh, put the statistic in the in a count functions. Okay, so after you generate the counter out, then now you you're using go to to sorry um cover function equal to counter out. So you can see like break down each functions and uh, which function you need to add test. And um, cool thing is like you can do it in uh, um Go view as well. So, for example, I went to in. I mean, the log go. I want to see which actually functions uh, um, go coverage. But then I immediately all know that actually my new contact functions is highlighted red. Means like the coverage is very low. Uh, this is just one example. Um, and actually, the whole thing here you can. Uh, um, you can put in your uh, alias or something, so it's really run it faster. Okay, the next two, pprof. Have you ever heard about these two? I mean, uh, maybe like if you have background in C++ or something, you want to profiling your program. So what pprof do is, it help you to profiling uh, memory on the CPU. And um, in order to do that, you just do, you add the import uh, package net HTTP pprof in your import list. And you don't need to do anything. And um, you can analyze your um, memory profile, uh, CPU profile, go routine profiles by running it as a net HTTP. So um, I try to um, for example, uh, you can put it in your code, like um, in your router, you just add, um, add debug pprof. And uh, as long as the functions, the, um, your browser can access the endpoints, then you actually you can see uh, what's happening. And uh, you can see both memory uh, profile and um, uh, CPU profiles. If you want to generate the output, then uh, is you use the runtime pprof that you can see the um, um, when you start the main program, the main dot go. It's actually you start your CPU profile, and when we we is, it, um, I have a defer here. It means that when you stop profiling, then you get the output. Okay, um, let's do an example. Okay, I have a Vim. Um, um, I have a lock uh, five here. If you notice, I'm using the lock um, library of GoKit, which is actually a microservice tool. 
So now I want to run the benchmark. And I want to see, like, okay, I have like two, I have different functions, different algorithms. I want to know that compare the two um, or different kind of like, um, uh, method. How, how is it um, different? And how do I optimize uh, my algorithm? So uh, here's a file. You can see like on the benchmark test. Yeah. So the benchmark actually you um, the the main function is just like we run a loop, and you call the, you, you invoke some functions. And the go test bench we determine like the number of, the number of um, operations will be running, and it will measure the timing. So. Okay, let's look at the test file. The test file here, I have a three, I have two benchmarks. The benchmark simple and uh, the benchmark with the uh, context. So you can imagine that you, when you pass to the log, your log interface with um, a simple context, or it was a simple, it has no context, and uh, maybe with the context. So uh, let's try to run it. <coughs> and uh, at this time, you, you want to generate the CPU memory profile and the CPU profile. Okay, go test. Okay, so now you see in your um, your local folder, there's a three new files. Log.test, um, CPU memory, CPU profile, and a memory profile. Uh, yeah, this one. So what uh, you want to see is, actually you want to analyze it. For example, you want to see the allocations, the uh, memory allocations um, in each function. So, um, we can be using it using the go to, uh, you know, you want to chase uh, allocation space. Okay, so here's, um, I want to, 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 to using a pprop tool to see what is the uh, allocation space in the memory. So, uh, in the inter uh, once you are in the pprop, you actually see the breakdown. Uh, you can actually um, try to find out. For them, I want to see what is the most like um, uh, memory cons cons consuming uh, operations. And uh, to, to visualize uh, this, you actually you can open, you can export the functions as um, a web. Uh, sorry, is a uh, SVG file, but actually you can see it as uh, a PNG file. So now actually, um, pprop will generate the image of your memory profile. And you can see it actually is more um, uh, visualized. Uh, let's open it. Okay, so actually, we can see the logged uh, memory files, and I mean, we can see like uh, which functions, which actually most uh, consume the memory. Of, um, so as as you can see, like if you add context or something into your functions, actually it takes um, some of the, um, some part of your memory. And for example, this uh, context log already occupies forty five point fifty nine percent. Want to dig more to uh, our location space. Um, let me sit here. Um, you can actually try to do, try to build your program, but you use a uh, GC flag. It means that we want to see like um, how the gar garbage collector is going. Uh, go build 
GC flex. Sorry, um, So what uh, go build um, when you add the GC flex? It means that we, we try to illustrate your uh, programs to see the um, to do the escaping analysis. So that is a uh, um, it's like for you to want to dig down into the, uh, your programs, especially like if you want to see whether your memories. As long as you know, like if you uh, want to, we, we have a hip, hip memory and a stack memory. So those things, if if it's unallocated, then it will go to the hip. If you um, um, you have like for example a, a predefined slice, or um, or mapped. Actually, if you know the like the capacities. So actually, you put, uh, rather put it in the stack. So stack is like uh, you saving you know, you know the exact locations. Heap is like you can uh, dynamic dynamically allocate the um, the memory as a runtime. Okay, um, let's move on to the next two. Go main and later. So yeah. Can you explain the GC flags again? Okay. Text uh, allocate objects which are not. The allocated? Um, the GC flag. The GC flag is a. Um, it's a basically detects memory leaks? Yes, you can actually uh, detect. It's an escape analysis. So um, if you want to detect your memory leak, you. Um, you, need, you need to run your programs on. Um, I think I have an example here. <coughs> okay. Um, for example, I have a, a file named uh, log.go. I will, oh, sorry. Okay, I have a JWT package. I want to um, to build the uh, the package. For example, if I go build anything, uh, without anything, without any flag. Mm. Sorry, yeah. Okay, I have a, a, a red limit package, and I, if I run go build, um, it just just generate um, um, a binary file. So, but if you want to see the escaping analysis, then I we I need to pass in the flag. Go build minus minus GC flex.
Okay, so then actually I can see like um, the flow of the program um, from, I mean the, the flow of the functions, it jump, it jump um, uh, from different functions. And, um, you can see all the leaks. Oh, no, if you want to know where the, your memory is like, like, yeah. oh yeah. yeah so actually you can see like, oh, it's a line like 255. Thank you. This is uh, taking a lot of work. Oh, sorry. We Okay, so it's, it's, it's how you uh, do escape analysis. But I mean, it's very, like, um, it's quite a bit advanced. So maybe like, um, I need a more time for elaborate on this point. Okay, so um, um, moving to the Gomez Talinter. I mean, this one is uh, my, one of my favorite, too, my favorite too, because you usually you do to, to lean your program, to like, check all the errors, to check all, I do our static check. Um, go meta linter is actually a collection of all those. It means that we um, run all those um, um, linter check for you. So um, let me try to run this one. So for example, I have a I have a this package. Um, see this package going to, and I went to. I want to uh, refactor it. So I mean, now uh, where do I start? Um, so go, uh, what I'm doing here is I run go manometer to, to using, um, to gather all the warnings from those um, uh, linter package. And I, um, I pass it to um, um, a command, actually try to get the most popular five um, uh, problems in this package. Okay, so actually it, Tell me, like, uh, there's some errors. Like, for example, this one is undeclared name. Yeah, so even if there's some, like, um, you can detect, help me to detect um, these functions. For them, I forget to um, add a comment to. Or I mean, I have unused private uh, variables or, uh, or such things. So I mean, it's just uh, one example. Um, so every time I commit the code, actually I run the writer first. So is it, I mean, how to um, improve my uh, um, productivities? Okay, the last um, thing I just mentioned, actually you can build your own uh, go-to. Um, how to do it? Um, This actually is, is how you like uh, L, you do the static analysis of your uh, program. You inspect it using the Go parser tool. You build like, um, a node. Imagine like um, you you are the ID. For example, you are the VS code, and you actually you have a different files, and you, you build the link of all the functions, and uh, each functions we linked to different methods, and those actually um, symbolize for the uh, nodes, it's come like a, an uh, AST tree. So like you imagine you have a, B, um, a binary search tree, and now you have a linking of uh, different methods and programs. So what you do is like you, uh, you use all the available tools, that's like just uh, what I mentioned uh, from the beginning. Um, you use like go printer, it's like a, a pack, another package to uh, process it and output it. So um, um, eventually, you actually you can build your go uh, go on tools. And the last step, actually, you just make it to be your uh, to, um, to run it as go install it, like make it a command line, put it in the go part. Then actually you can invoke it, invoke it anywhere. Mm. So this is it's all of my presentation. It's just going to do a summary. Uh, what is what uh, possibly you can use in your day uh, use go to to do it to enhance your um, your workflow um, 
on most of the two here, you it's um it's already integrated in GoVim, so it's very uh, um, useful um, idea to to use um, it's really idea to um, to enhance your pro product activities. But I think for my personal um, preference, I still use VS Code because it's more uh, user friendly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's all. Do you, do you have any questions? I was wondering yeah. if, they, <coughs> if there were like native native Golang tools for like generating the the, the JSON parser and what do you call it? Mm -hmm. JSON like you're given a struct to generate or or given a piece of JSON to generate the struct. I know, I know there are tools, but I was wondering if there was like a go generate for that. Um so there should be. Um it's a JSON you want to mean like you want to add different text, right? Is it, for example, you, you have a list, you have a different fields, like for example, this JSON will be like, um, uh, for example, in uh, they have name and uh, um, yeah, like so name and so on. Sort of like tool to help coordinate those <coughs> JSON and instructs. And the, the, I know there's something existing, but I was wondering if it would be in, in the base. Okay, I think it's those, those two is, um, is a variable. It's just like when you it produce a code, um, for example, like you have a struct, like something like this. Mm. Um, you should use, I mean, that's a JSON uh, enum. Means that you, uh, you can add a tag to a JSON and using the reflex because um, most of the tool here underline using a reflex library to evaluate the type. And, uh, you can add the JSON. So the output here is like, um, the node here is actually is different fields in your struct. And when it passed to the AST tree, and it adds the, um, the JSON, usually you, you add the JSON, um, it's a curly back, I mean the, um, the, the quote, yeah, and then, uh, yeah. So it's, it's it's a writing to the output. Yeah, I think um, if you are interested, you can search for um, JSON enum. I think this um, enum. Oh yeah, this one. It's actually using the Go generate tool to pass in the struct and uh, to convert it to a JSON um, um, JSON friendly. Um, if you want to do more um, more functionalities in the JSON text, maybe it's a more it's a Go tag already. It's like I don't remember, but um, yeah, I think it's like you can use uh, VS Code. I don't know. I mean, how uh, VS Code do it? But actually, you can able to to add. The extra few to your struct. I mean, um, you can try it yeah, if you. Uh, yeah. Any more question? Okay. Um, um, without any questions, I uh, hope you um, can learn something today. Um, use more go to or build your own go to in your um, um, uh, daily work. And, um, 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 I would like to recommend, like, uh, if you you have time, can go through all those um, um, available tools by um, GoLang. I mean, uh, this uh, is very useful when you want to do a refactor or you want to do to move your code or your package to different locations. And, or maybe like you want to use like uh, uh, to build your own Python's. For example, you uh, you go doc here. It's just like you want to run your uh, documentation of your own code. I mean, like you just list like, down all your um, comments and it becomes uh, documentations. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you for GC flags. I think that single